Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video we'll be setting up cfile using docker. Now cfile is a powerful and secure file synchronization uh, and sharing platform. Think of it as something like Google Drive, like G Drive, how you could have it on your desktop. You could synchronize folders and continue to keep them synced up to Google Drive, but in this case it would be C Drive. Great service for those that are wanting to make sure that you know their folders and drives are continuously backed up and you can share it with others uh, within your team or your household and stuff like that. So let's dive in. Before we begin, let's just quickly introduce Cfile just in case you're not aware of what it is. Now, as you can see on the screen, Cfile is, allows you to be able to set up file synchronization. So from your devices into your C drive server, they offer a whole bunch of clients that you can use as well. So there's, uh, you can have C drive client for your Mac, your PC, your, you know, your Android, your iPhone. They have an, a fantastic suite of clients to be able to interact with your server once it's all set up. Again, they've got secure, good encryption, high performance. Now, when it comes to um, high performance, take that with a grain of salt because, you know, the application, yes, very fast. It's, you know, it has fantastic performance, like they say, but it's also based on your setup at home as well, since we will be doing self-hosting. So the performance is only as great as you can give it. Since it's very popular, the knowledge base that they use, you know, there's a vast amount of information if you ever get stuck and it's enterprise ready as well in terms of you can have your AD LDAP integration all set up as well if you need it. And then at the bottom, we can see here that they have over 1 million users, uh, which is combined of companies and individual users and whatnot. And there's a few just that I've got here, um, some case studies, I'm assuming. Uh, so of some big company names here. So the target audience for this is definitely someone who's trying to move away from the Google Drive suite, the OneDrive suite, and bringing the hosting of your files and the sharing of your files to your own control and your own, you know, your own team or your own company. If you're just wanting that management of your files and the synchronization and sharing to be independent of anyone else uh, besides yourself. Now, a reason we'll be using Docker, I use Docker for everything. Docker makes the deployment of these services so easy, updating the management, everything. It's just seamless when you use Docker. And it also allows me, when I create these sort of videos, to be able to make sure that if I'm using Docker, that means if you follow the same set of instructions, the process and the outcomes should be the same. And then if there's any issues, I can help troubleshoot a lot easier because using Docker kind of removes that OS specific problems that people could face. Now there's a couple of things you'll need here. You'll need Docker installed and Docker Compose. I've made many videos showing how to have those set up. I'll have a link somewhere in the top for you to click and also in the description. So feel free to follow those if you need to install Docker and Docker Compose, because again, that is a requirement for this video. So since we're using Docker, we will be deploying this using a Docker Compose file and Cfile will give us one uh, out on their main website and I'll have a link to this page in the description. Also have a link to my book stack, which will have this, this compose file and also some steps that we used in this video as well. Uh, you can use one or the other, it doesn't really matter. So on this page, what we're looking for is download and modify the, the Docker compose YAML file. So if we click this, it will take us to the YAML file, the Docker compose file. So if we just have a quick zoom in, we can see here what uh, it's creating a few services. So the first service it's creating is a database. Right, and that will be using a MariaDB database, and it has a bunch of predefined environment variables here. So you can see it's setting up a default password as db underscore dev. You're going to want to change this. We're creating a volume. It's creating a volume here. It's using a network, so a C file net. We have memcache, which is a key value store. Let's reduce the load on the database. If you're keen on learning more about memcache, I'll have a link in the description for you. And then we've got the C file service itself. So here we can see that it's running, it's going to want to run on port 80. And then if we enable HTTPS, now if you're going to be using this in any sort of environment where you will be having actual data, uh, your own data, I would not recommend running this on anything other than HTTPS. Make sure you're using HTTPS for this. And below we can see how you enable that. Uh, we're creating another volume for the C file data itself. We're creating some environment variables. We want to make sure you change these. Um, the password, make sure you change this password. Now this password needs to match. Um, so this password here needs to match the password you put here. Otherwise the connection will not work. And then we're creating up a C file admin, right? So uh, by default, it will create this as a, an example user, me at example.com. 
it will have a password as a secret. And then again, if you're using HTTPS, you'll want this as true. Um, otherwise it's false if you're not using HTTPS. And then if you are using HTTPS, you'll be specifying the domain name that the server will be hosted on. And then we're just saying there's a couple of depends on here. So I'll make sure that the database and memcache is up uh, because this service relies on those. And it will also be on the C file network. So this is pretty straightforward. So what we're going to want to do is grab this compose file and the server or wherever you'll be running this Docker compose, that's where you'll want to copy this to. So we're on my server where I'll be running the Docker compose. This is my Alzim server. Uh, and I've created a directory which is docker and then c file and then in here I have that docker compose file. So let's just quickly look at that. So this is the docker compose file. I've just made a, a couple of tweaks. So the volumes, uh, this was going to use a specified directory um, on the server but I've just changed it because I like to contain all of the files that, that are for my containers under their specified folder. So I'm just saying create the c file mysql folder in this current directory. Uh, I will be just deploying this using the HTTP method. So I'm not going to set up HTTPS, but if you are again going to be using this for any sort of production, sharing, putting your actual data on this, please set it up with HTTPS. The comments here pretty much tell you what you need to set up uh, to have HTTP, HTTPS set up. So well, let's just continue going down here. I That's all I've really changed was that volume directory, this one here. And then I've just come down and I've changed the port. I don't want this to run on 80. So I've just set it up to run on 80, 87. HTTPS, you would uncomment this, right? And you would expose and you'd want it running on the 443 port. Same for the, the C file data. I'm just making sure that this is running in my local folder directory you'll see when I create this where it creates those folders I'll showcase that in a second again it's going to be creating a db dev password these need to match if you whatever password you set in the maria db environment variables they need to match here because it automatically on the the creation of these containers those environment variables map to each other so it automatically connects to the database so you don't need to worry about that connection uh, we will be setting up a admin email, so I could set this to whatever I want. So let me just add my email here. So that will be my username I use to sign in. Now, when it comes to the host name, there's a thing here. And now I don't know if this is just an issue with running it locally and not running it on uh, via HTTPS. But when I, I'm setting the URL as the local host port, so 127.0.0.1, and then when this starts up, we actually have to make a quick change into C file. So we can actually upload files because you actually get a bit of a, an issue um, in my case where you can't actually upload files. And I, since I connect to it via Alzim on the port, I have to set up that host name within C file once it starts up. For some weird reason, I can't set it here because it doesn't start up. So if you have that issue, um, that's how, kind of how you can get around it. So I'll show you that. So what we can do is we can do a docker compose up hyphen D and that will create those containers and the network for us. And if we do an LS, we can see it created those folders as well. So what we should be able to do is actually hit that port and be able to connect to it. And there we are, we are in. So we can now log in with that email I set and a secret was the password that I set. And just like that, we are in. So before we go too far in, I just want to show you if you are running this without HTTPS, I'll just quickly show you the issue I was talking about. So if we go to upload a file, and I'll just choose a thumbnail here, and I'll click open, you see you get a network error. Now, the way that I've seen to fix this, if, if you go to system admin, and then settings, change these, to be the actual URL of your server. So this is our Zim um, on port 8087. Save that. And the same for down here, our Zim 8087. Save. Okay, so now if we try upload a file, go into my library, upload, upload file, open. You can see it's now uploaded it. So I just quickly wanted to show you uh, how you fix any upload issues. But now we're in C file and let's have a look around. 
Uh, so again, it's pretty, if you're used to any sort of G Cloud, Dropbox, whatever, the concept is relatively the same. So you have um, your directory where you can upload things, your library, and this is your own you know, personal place where you can upload things. And then if you wanted, you could have other libraries. So let's say we had a new library and we'll call this team. So this is the library that I'd have with my team. And you could share this, you could create a share link and you could share it with others. Um, you could have groups, all of that good stuff. And this is where everyone can collaborate. So it's very simple to, to wrap your head around, right? You have groups, you have users and you have libraries and you have your own libraries, you can share libraries. And yeah, that's pretty much the concept here. And that it also provides you clients as well. So for example, this is the C file client right so what we can do is we can use a login here so my login so if i'll put in my credentials here and using the client now if i hit login we can see now we have this which is the uh, again it's quite fam it seems quite similar to you know google drives one and where you have your client and you can access your files right here click into there it opens up this box and i can see that thumbnail that i had so this server could be wherever i don't even need to access it via the, the browser i've just got my client where i can upload download files so and they have this for your phone and everything as well so it's very seamless uh, the the client the server side very easy to set up so there you have it that's setting up c file and it was relatively easy painless uh, and as long as you have docker installed the whole setup is pretty straightforward now like most of my videos i normally just do a quick introduction show you how to set it up and a quick look around now if you actually wanted me to go into specifics with c file let me know and i'm more than happy to continue making videos on this just to help anyone that may be setting this up like https uh securing it maybe uh, setting up external authentication I'm more than happy to go through all of that if you are interested so that is setting up c file that is using docker as well any questions please ask below if you, this video was helpful in any way or you're enjoying the content please make sure to subscribe it really helps me out with just knowing that the content i'm producing is interesting to people and i've also created a membership option as well so um that there will allow you to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with me if you need any troubleshooting help or if you just want to support the channel so i really appreciate it thank you so much everyone and i will see you in the next video bye bye